Testing, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. Good afternoon. I'm Aaron Heiser of Maker's Leather Supply. This is video number five on the Bougie Backpack. Um, sorry that this series has taken so long. We had a Wichita Falls show. We had a business trip we had to take. We we're in the middle of selling a house, which means we're in the middle of buying a house. I'm sorry. Life happens. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> All right. So in this video, we're going to start constructing the bag itself. Okay. So we've got our big windmill piece here, all right, and we've got our tooled pieces here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch cameras so that we can see what we're going to do with these. And then we've got some skiving to do and we've got some sewing to do. And if I can get far enough today, today we've got some braiding to do to make the, the cord that goes through it. <clears throat> Let's hope. All right, so here we go. I'm going to switch to the overhead camera. So I can explain what all we're going to skive, and then um, we'll skive. Okay, so just like that, we're now looking directly up at the camera. So here's all of our pieces, once again, okay, and the big windmill piece that we already showed. I really think that um, this one looks really good, even compared to the last one I made. Um, I'm just digging the colors and stuff. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this piece over. And see all the brown spots? That's where I, um, I took that cigarette lighter and went behind it and burned out any of the, uh, the shavings and, and, and the fray and all that from doing the filigree work. So what I need to do, though, is lay this down. i got a candle over here. I better not throw this thing around too much, huh? Move that out of the way there. Matter of fact, let me blow it out before I forget. <laughs> all right. So... If you'll notice, your windmill piece is a bit larger than your tool piece, okay? Now, what we're doing, and when I mean larger, I mean at the ends here, okay? So what we're going to do is skive and fold those areas, all right? If you're not comfortable skiving and folding, then you can just fold it. But, you know, kind of feel around on your leather and see if, you know, if you just fold it, if it'll be too bulky for your needs, um, but basically all of these edges will be folded over like this and then sewn down and then of course sewn to the bag, um, you know, and all this will be sewn together, okay? So the first thing we have to do is skive all these edges and if you, when you put this on here, you see that it's about three quarters of an inch to an inch that it would need to be folded over. Okay, I've got it even on the top and the bottom. There we go, we can angle it a little bit more. Um, so yeah, and then how it would look, of course, this would actually be on the other side of this leather, uh, the finished side of it. But we need to, you know, I'm just trying to get a good visual for you on what, how much of it needs to fold over. So, we will, um, I'll have to reposition the cameras. I've been trying to get the other employees to help me out and be a cameraman, but Everybody's busy with their own jobs, and that's another reason that I've kind of, like, him hawed on this video. Is like, oh yeah, I'll get somebody when they're available, and there's just no such thing as available sometimes. I need a cameraman. Anybody want to be a cameraman? Uh, anybody out there work for leather? <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to reposition some of the cameras, and we'll go over to the skiving machine. All right, friends and family, guess what? I absolutely accidentally muted the microphone when I moved it over there to my skiver. So, this is the NP4 skiving machine, and this is me talking to a microphone, um, trying to remember everything you need to be told, <laughs> and trying to learn how to do a voiceover. So, um, I've set the, the skiver up to, again, skive three quarters of an inch or so uh, from the edges, and I'm just going to run this through here. Um, I really hate skiving with uh, uh, these thinner or these floppier leathers um, with a, by hand. It's just very difficult for me. So I really like the skiving machine. Um, it really helps a lot. But there you can see how much we, we've, we've skived off of it uh, so that we can fold that edge over. Okay, and we're going to do that to every piece of the, uh, the windmill shape of the, the, the gray leather there. 
Um, we'll do it to just the outside perimeter of it. We're not doing in between the, the V cuts, in between the blades of the windmill, just the outside pieces of it, okay? So it didn't take me near as long to tell you as it did to do it on the video. So now we'll just sit and watch. So here we have the uh, the entire windmill has been skived on the edges there and we are going to lay it out and we're going to start laying tape along the edges um, so that we can fold them over okay and we're just gonna put a put a nice big piece of double-sided tape that's three quarter inches wide I believe um, and we're gonna run it along following the curvature of the of the um, the gray piece and um, that way we can fold that fold it over right at the edge of the skive okay and it'll make a, a very nice finished uh, rolled over top for the uh, the pleated areas where where it'll be bunched up on the bag All right, so we have cut the uh, end of the tape there, and uh, we're going to start the fold over, and it's going to create some some bubbles, I guess you could say, uh, just areas where it doesn't want to fold as nicely, um, and that's fine. You just have to kind of work those areas out and make sure that it doesn't create a giant um, pleat or a fold over, and uh, pretty pretty simple to do. You can do it all the way around the. Uh, the entire piece, um, just one windmill uh, fan blade at a time. All right, so here I am taking my uh, rolling tool and uh, just smoothing out any of the, the wrinkles and ruffles there. Um, you won't smooth them completely out, so it's okay. But again, you don't want giant foldovers and stuff. Um, I do know that I was talking about um, the roller itself. Um, we have started carrying these now uh, in our store, um, but they're not squeaky like the one that I used in so many videos before. I always called it my squeaky toy because it squeaked a lot uh, to the point it could be pretty annoying if I used it a lot on the videos. Anyway, um, long story short, we started carrying a really nice one that uh, it has um, bearings in it and stuff. It doesn't squeak. It rolls super nicely. 
but uh, yeah. So now I have to find a new word for it because it's not my squeaky toy anymore. Okay, so here I'm talking about, we're going to, I still hadn't figured out that my big red light on my microphone means that it's muted because, you know, I'm an idiot. But anyway, um, we're going to put the tape along the backs of the lattice work and along the edges, following the contour of the, the edges um, on the bag. But I don't want to get any of the tape anywhere real close to the edges because once I'm done sewing, as usual, I don't want to see uh, shiny, sticky tape, um, you know, uh, through my sew line there. Okay, so keep it, keep it an eighth of an inch or so away from all edges and it'll work out best. All right, so here it is all taped up and I still hadn't figured out that my microphone is paused or uh, muted, I apologize. And this is where I'm come back and tell you that, uh, hey, I forgot to do something on the, the back of the flap of the bag. Um, it's super fuzzy because we're not, I didn't line it. Um, you could line it if you wanted to. Um, you'd line it with a thin piece of veg tan or something like that. But I'm gonna show you a way here that you can um, get a, nice and finished without having to line it. Uh, unfortunately, I did did get a little bit of uh, stain on the back of it, but anyway, I'm behind the video. <laughs> the, um, the product I'm using is Leather Balm with Atom Wax from Phoebing. Um, George Hurst taught me this trick a long time ago, but I totally forgot all about it until a customer one day was asking me um, how, to, uh, how to slick the back of belts. And I was like, oh yeah, there's this way that I was taught a long time ago and I forgot all about it. So I'm gonna use a dauber and I'm gonna use a glass slicker and I'm going to just use the dauber to spread the, uh, the, the leather balm with atom wax all over the back. And then this glass slicker I'm going to use and um, just press it down. I'm not gonna burnish it and rub it back and forth like you would your edges. I'm just going to rub it one direction at a time and then keep rotating it as I go. Um, I'm getting ahead of the video now, of course. It does take a while to get it on there uh, because the leather, of course, absorbs it very quickly since you're working on the, the flesh side of the leather and not the grain side. Um, but you don't want to saturate it by any means. You don't want to like pour it on there and try to spread it like you would a big, big area of glue because you don't want it to soak into the point that it creates spots on your finished side of your leather, okay? Um, Generally, I really like this uh, leather balm with atom wax um, as a top coat for leather that's been tooled and things like that. Um, it works kind of like a, a, a wax for a car. You put it on and um, get it on there pretty well and you let it dry a little bit and it'll get kind of cloudy and hazy and then you take a really soft cloth and you buff it off and it leaves a super mellow, uh, low sheen finish. I don't, I don't like a lot of shine on a lot of my leather work. There is a place for that, but my style doesn't necessarily dictate shininess. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a great finish to use. And uh, yeah, we're almost done covering up the back of it here with this, uh, the, the leather balm with atom wax. And then we'll grab that glass slicker and start uh, smoothing the fibers down. Again, you're not really burnishing as much as you're just smoothing it down. So here we go. So again, I don't rub back and forth with my slicker. I just keep rotating it and kind of pushing, um, pushing the fibers down, smoothing them over, okay? All right, at the end of this clip, I finally realized that my microphone was uh, pa um, muted. And so when we come back, it'll be just regular old me like it always is. All right, so we got that part done. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit while we go back to the big windmill piece again. Okay, we need to lay it out flat. We need to lay 
this piece across it. And it doesn't matter, the, the, this is ambidextrous, so this could be the, at one end of it, this could be at the other end of it, as long as um, there's no right or wrong way, I guess is what I'm trying to say here, okay? Um, but what I do need to do, actually, is turn it over. Okay. Turn this over. And what I'm going to need to do is measure where this is going to set. Okay, I need it right smack in the middle. Alrighty. Now, if you did like I did and fold it over just a teeny bit too much, not a problem. It's stretchy. Okay, stretch it out just a tiny bit, and oh look, it all matches up now. No problem, okay? So, I'm gonna get out my handy dandy, I don't know if this ruler is big enough. It is not. I'm gonna get out one of my quilter squares as soon as I can find it. I recently redid one of my tool walls, and my quilter squares were on that wall, so I gotta figure out where I put the daggum things. Um, Give me a minute. Found it. All right. So I need to measure and put this thing right in the middle here. Okay. So I'm just going to go corner to corner here. Looks like it's right about 21 inches. Let me actually turn this thing around so that the bulk of it is 21 inches. All right, and then the head of this thing. Head of this thing's right about seven inches. So, sorry, right about six inches. So there we are. I've got seven and a half inches on one side of it. And I've got seven and a half inches on Oops, seven and a quarter, hang on. There. Seven and three-eighths inches on each side, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully lift that up and pull the piece of tape off of this very back piece here so that I can temporarily stick it on. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side, except I'm going to use a white pencil or a piece of chalk or something like that to, uh, to make sure I've got it in the same place over here. Okay, and I'm just going to mark my, my gray leather with the white pencil or piece of chalk um, because I don't want to stick it down to both sides yet. Okay, we've got other stuff to do there. So I'm going to grab my white pencil here. And this stuff will wipe right off, so it's no big deal. You can use a silver pen too, as long as they also wipe off. Some do, some don't. I have to use the silver pen because the white chalk's not messing with it. Okay, so I got that centered too. Now, um, we need to. So, these sides right here. But, before we do that, okay, I'm gonna pull this thing, I'm gonna mark these other edges here because honestly I gotta back up a step because I'm an idiot and we all know that. My mind is going a million places today. Okay, so when you fold this thing in half, you gotta imagine that the bottom parts of your back strap, this is the back of the bag, uh, the bottom parts of your shoulder strap are going to be somewhere along right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take part of my dark brown strap. Okay, and I'm going to cut a little couple of little pieces that are just, say, two inches long. And I'm going to stick them. Eleven... The bottom part of this is going to be 11 inches from the top. Okay, so from here to up here is going to be 11 inches. All right. So I'm going to cut these pieces out and uh, get ready to do that. And we're going to stick them on there with a D ring on them. All righty. You can't see it, but I did a with my silver pen. I just did a little line at 11 inches there. 
Okay, I've got my piece here. It's not cut to any exacting standard other than it is a one inch wide piece just like the D-ring is. So there's what I'm going to do and again the uh, the 11 inch mark is the bottom of this piece because here's the top excuse me the top of the bag. All right and since I've already got some double sided tape there I'll just go ahead and use it and I'll stick the sucker on there. Because when we sew the bag the the tooled part of the bag to the soft part of the bag that needs to be there. Okay and I'm just going to do it where the D-ring itself is barely on the outside of it um, and uh, is parallel to the the angle and the curvature of the uh, thing, the tooled piece. Okay. So here we have another one. I will admit I did take that that piece and I uh, split it down a little bit. Um, you can do that with a skiving knife or a paring knife. You can do it with a head knife. You can do it with a scalpel even. Um, just try to get it a little bit thinner if you want to. Uh, it will help with you know the appearance of the bag. It will uh, it will help with that. It looks more professional. Okay, so there they are, right there. All right, now. I got all this stuff marked up and measured and ready to go, so now it's time to put the top to the bottom, the tooled part to the untooled part, and go to town. Some of these tapes overlap, so it's going to be fun pulling some of the, the backings off, I guess. Paper off tape, my favorite. <laughs> All right, so we have our markings where this thing needs to lay. Okay, and I'm going to start with the back part here, put it with its markings. Make sure my D rings are not underneath the bag. Come over here and I'm not going to let the whole thing touch until I know that the other part is in its markings too. This other other end up here. Okay. Then I'll just smooth it on there. And this is going to be awesome. Okay. Now, what I need to sew. I need to sew all the way across here. I need to sew all the way across here. And then I also need to sew across these and over here across these. Alrighty. And, um, but wait, there's more. Remember this little guy? Okay. He's going to be stuck here. And then. It's complicated even more. He's going to be stuck here. All of this will need to sew together. But first, I'm just going to sew this line. I'm going to go ahead and take these over to the machine with me. Use some double sided tape here to uh, hold them together. Alrighty. And I'm putting this double sided tape right at the bottom edge of this piece. All right, because when I sew it together, the flap is going to fold down. That's going to go up, and I, I don't, I'm going to sew in far enough that I don't see any of that tape. Okay. So this will stick to this, and then I'll need another piece of tape right underneath there stick to this. This is still a little bit damp, but I think the tape will hold to it, so it'll be all right. OK. 
Okay. Those two are stuck together now. And I'll put a piece of tape here, but I'm not gonna stick it to anything yet because again, I have to sew that other piece first. Then I'll stick them together. All right. When I come back, we'll be at the sewing machine again. Or for the first time. Haha. <laughs> Alrighty, so here we are at the class 18 sewing machine. I have it loaded up with size 138 thread and we're gonna start the stitching here. Okay, so I'm going to, sorry I gotta keep looking back at the computer monitor to make sure that I'm on camera here. I have my microphone sitting on my sewing machine but there's a good bet that I may knock it off. <laughs> so anyway, all right, my first line I'm going to do is going to be to one of the ends that will sew across the veg tan part two. Okay, do me a couple of back stitches here. I'm sewing about an eighth inch or so from the edge of the, the fold over. I'm not using a, the edge guide, I'm just using the, um, the machine um, the feed dog area that I can see as, as my guide. sure it crawls up onto the leather good. I need to lock these wheels down on this machine. Um, it crawled up onto the, the tooled part just fine. So now we can sew across that. I'm keeping an eye on my microphone to make sure the back end of the bag doesn't knock it over. I wish all this stuff was wireless. back off the other side of it now and we're just sewing across all the way to the end and back stitch Okay, find my little nippers here. Good question on where they are. So anyway, I'm gonna do that on the other side as well, the bat, the where the um, lattice work is cut out, and then I'm gonna just sew these edges here the exact same way. I'm just gonna back stitch, go forward, and then back stitch at the very end. Okay, um, when all that's done. We'll come back and we'll uh, sew down the edges of the veg tan to the gray, le gray leather. Alright, so I sewed down all of the little window flaps. See where I did? Just the edge. And we're going to now sew along the edges of the tooled leather onto the. Um, all right, left my microphone on the ground. Um, onto the uh, the gray piece here, okay? I'm gonna check my bobbin, make sure I got plenty of thread, but also I forgot another important step. I mean, it's not too late, don't get me wrong. But I'm gonna pull these two pieces apart because I want to sew around each of them um, right here and here, and it'll just make a nicer finished product when all the stitching matches on everything okay the last one of these I made I really kicked myself for not sewing around at least the flap um, especially since I like to use contrasting stitching because it just I 
mean, 99% of the people out there wouldn't even notice it, but that other 1% would be like, something's, something's missing. You could have done more here. Okay? So I'm going to check my bobbin, then I'm going to check the or, uh, sew around those, and then I'm going to sew that part to this part. Okay. Yeah, we got plenty of bobbin here. All right. So I'm just going to sew right along the edge of the the veg tan part, the tooled part, and just go from one end to the other. Start with the back stitch as usual, and then forward. And again, I'm not really using an edge guide. I can I can see how far that edge is from that presser foot. Um, edge guides are great, especially if you're doing lots of strap work and stuff like that. But honestly, I find that I do just as well without one. And you learn more skills um, if you're not constantly depending on one. Uh, people that have used one ever since they you know, got a machine, they may not know how to really do well without it. And I, I feel like it's an important thing to know. Now the only difficult part about this is where that D-ring is, I'm going to have to, you know, make sure that I climb up over that thicker area just fine. Shouldn't be too hard, but it is something to keep in mind. Sometimes your machine, you have to kind of pull the leather through to make sure that it actually steps up over that, that thicker area. Um, it did just fine on this one, so I'll, I'll be all right. On the last one of these I made, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, I forgot to put the D-rings on it, so I ended up having to rivet them after everything was done, and I didn't like it near as much, because um, then the back of the bag doesn't have as clean of an appearance. All right, almost back up to that top stitch line, so I'll reverse, do a couple of back stitches. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing down the other side of the bag, okay? No reason to make you watch it. I'm gonna do the exact same thing, that's it. I come back, we'll sew around the uh, top parts of the flap. Okay, got that piece all sewed up and pretty. So again, all I'm going to do is sew around this part, the curved part of this one right here, and then the curved part of this one right here. I'm not going to bother sewing um, the straight line here or the straight line here, because those will actually be sewn together with the bag here in a few minutes. So set the rest of this up out of the way. I am going to use an edge guide on this just because it's a very prominent part of the bag. Um, it's going to be right out there for the world to see and it's all curved. So, you know, so I'm going to start with a back stitch or two, don't need much. adds another layer or dimension, I guess, to this uh, piece to do it this way. And it's another nice finishing touch that it'll have matching stitching to the rest of the bag.
there it is. Nice and stitched. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to do the same thing on this other piece, but I'm going to pull my edge guide back up again because it's got a lot of curve to it. And this edge guide did come with the little roller piece here instead of the flat fence that I'm using now. But as opposed to taking the five minutes it would take to change that out, I'm just going to wing it. And this is not near as prominent of a piece as this one is. Back stitch or two here and here we go I'm gonna keep my finger down as if it were the edge guide and just kind of let it rotate around and it'll do fine as long as I don't move my finger I won't sew through it Janie's always worried that I'm gonna sew through my finger but have a simple rule don't move it done. Going nice and slow so I can stay per parallel to my edge. Alright. I'm going to take a second off camera to tape these two pieces together the same way that they were taped before. Um, and then we will sew these two pieces to the bag. Okay, now those two pieces are taped back together right here. Okay, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to scribe me a line about a half inch down from the edge of the tooling leather here. Okay, I want to make sure that line's good and straight. So I'm just using a scratch all here and making me a little mark. I'm sure you can't see it on camera. Yeah, maybe a little. So there it is. Okay, and when I go to line this up, I'm going to line up this edge here with that line. And that'll ensure, one, that this is straight, and two, it's far enough onto here that I can sew all these layers together at once. Okay. Um, that's another thing I had, a problem I had when I was uh, coming up with all the design for this bag was I made one where those didn't line up near as well and as I sewed I actually wasn't th sewing through all the layers like I should be. Okay, So we um, put the double sided tape on here already. We didn't have to take it back off for re-sewing that area or sewing the edges. I'm going to be very careful to line it up, stick her down. Sorry if my head gets in the way, I got I to gotta see too. Okay, here we go. This is probably the most uh, difficult sew line on this bag, is this one right here. So let's hope we do okay. <laughs> All right, I'm pull the back of it up so I don't knock my microphone off. Let me check my bobbin one more time because again, it was never full to begin with. But I do want to make sure I don't run out. We're good. I'd rather take the extra five seconds to check the bobbin than to have to splice a thread in the middle of this. Because even if with good back stitching and everything, it's, it's very difficult to hide a splice like that on the face of a finished project. OK, 
Okay, now I'm gonna sew this line good and slow because my presser foot is on the edge of the line and I don't like I don't, on the edge of the leather and I, that's just not favorable. I never try to sew with my presser foot on the edge of a piece of leather, okay? But sometimes it's necessary. I'm gonna make my stitch gap just a little bit larger, um, the stitches per inch I'm doing, um, because since I'm sewing something much thicker, several layers thicker, um, it'll, it'll actually tighten that, that stitch gap up a little bit. So. Oh, come on now. There we go. All right, and back forward we go. few back stitches and we're done with that. This bag is coming together just fine. It's where the pucker factor gets high especially when I'm doing it on camera because there's no no hiding it if I screw that up. Um, even if I took it back apart and edited the video to do it again you'd still see my holes because it's not like I'm retooling all this stuff and making a new one to uh, to redo it. But just like any of my other videos, it would be a teaching point, okay? And again, we sewed that to the back of the bag, not the lattice work front of the, side, front of the bag, okay? Very important. All right, now, all these funny windmill shapes. Now we're gonna do something with those. And what we're gonna do with them is just sew them together, okay? We're just gonna line them up like that. I'm gonna use clips, clip them together, and then this bag will be sewn together inside out. And when we turn it right side out, it'll create the draping of the, uh, that cloth, okay? Uh, I'm gonna pause this so I can grab my clips and we'll start doing that. All right, sorry about that. I actually started clipping it up and everything like I wasn't even making a video here. So all I did is grab two next to each other, folded them up, I made sure that the tops of them were level here, and I clipped them up, okay? Wrong side or finish sides together. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip up another one. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna put the tops together to where they're perfectly even. Grab me a couple of clips. And just put a couple of clips on it. And it's okay at the very bottom if they, you know, aren't perfectly aligned, like if there's a little bit of a loop on there, that's fine. It's gonna be hidden inside the pleats of the bag. Okay. All right, I'll clip one more up here and we'll sew up one side of the bag all at once. And then we'll clip up the other side and sew all those. Just like that, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take and I'll just fold that veg tan piece in half and I'm just gonna sew down those, uh, those edges, okay? Using my standard, um, I don't know, three eighths of an inch or so, quarter, I'd say a quarter of an inch uh, seam line, okay? But again, when I start sewing, I want to make sure that the tops of the, like the foldovers are, are nice and even with each other, okay? I don't want those two to, uh, to come apart because I don't want to, I don't want it to be uneven up there. I'll backstitch all the way to the very top and then I'll start my forward stitch. I 
might as well throw my little edge guide down here and give it so I can go faster. And as I go along, I'll just remove my clips, just like I have with every other thing I make with clips. Okay, keeping these edges nice and straight with each other. It might help if you just clip, you know, one portion at a time. That's more than fine. I'm just trying to save time and effort here by clipping up a couple of them at a time. It may make it more difficult for some. down here at the bottom can be a little bit more of a bear with the others clipped up too. Okay. Also all the way to the bottom of that V shape, do me a couple of back stitches. And there we go. There's two of the windmill fan blades sewn together. trimming off my excess here. I'll show you what this looks like and then I'm going to go along and sew up all the rest of these. Okay. But there it is. There's the, the one that's already sewn right there. And again, when we turn this inside out, that'll be a very nice pleat that goes uh, in towards the bag. Okay, so I got to sew up this one and this one and then flip it over and sew up uh, all three of them on the other side as well. So when I come back, that'll be done. All right, folks, so it's all sewn up. It's inside out still, but it's time to turn it right side out. Super easy to do. It's not like some bags where it's all difficult and, you know, tight in there. We're just going to press the inside to the outside. All right. Make sure all my clips are off here. Okay. Now, here's what we have to imagine, is these pleats inside like this. Do, 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 do. Uh, this is all going to be easier once the drawstring's on it, but the drawstring's not on it yet, is it? I'm going to use some clips. We're almost done with today's video. Uh, I'm going to use some clips to hold all these pleats together out here, and that'll help it kind of set and form overnight. Okay? So I'll just clip all these little pleats together here. I know you can't really see what I'm doing, but you'll see the end result in just a second. About like so. Okay. See so how I did that? Do the same thing on the other side here. And then it'll have a little bit of shape to it. We like that. stubborn okay so when this is folded down there will be a locks fastener right here okay and then the bag maybe the forward facing camera would have been best for this part but anyway push these pleats in here on the inside a little bit it drapes really well once it's all hanging and done but it takes some time to get to that point unfortunately So, there you have it folks, it's going to be really nice. 
So tomorrow we are going to apply a LOX fastener here. We're going to fold and rivet this over the giant D-ring that we're going to use for our shoulder straps. And we're going to apply the handles, the, or the, the backpack straps, and we will um, do a four-part braid on a braided cord and create tassels uh, that will hang just under this flap, and it's going to look amazing. Okay, so uh, again, I'm Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply. This has been part five of the Bougie Backpack, I believe, and I'm um, really excited to get this finished up with you. Um, as always, if you like our content, please subscribe, and you'll know when we post more stuff. Thank you. Have a great day.